Hi, thank you for watching this video. Now today I'm going to teach you how to make a super fast and easy watercolor flower. Um, now these are hollyhocks or um, trumpet flowers. They're just a general flower shape that's super easy and quick. And they will look great perhaps in the middle of a card or something. Or maybe as a background. So let's get started. Now to start you just make an oval shape. I'm going to sketch it in with a pencil for better um, accuracy but you don't actually have to sketch it in if uh, you just want to wing it. But just a like, oval shape and then you just make a little oval in the middle. Right, so basically we have a little um, thing in the middle for the stamen. And that's our general shape. So I'm using a water brush today and watercolors. So just pick a nice purpley red or pink or whichever color you want to use. And just have a tiny little bit on your brush. Just a little bit. Why I'm, I want to do um, just a little bit of color is because I want to be able to see where I've wet the paper. Now you just want to wet the entire um, oval, especially the outside, make a clear line. And then just sort of wet the inside of the oval as well. But not the place in the very center where we drew the, uh, well, the smaller oval. And you'll see why later on. So make sure your oval looks good because this is going to be the outside edge of your flower. If this oval is lopsided or something, make it bigger. That's why really this is the simplest flower ever because you literally can make it bigger and bigger as you refine it and get rid of any mistakes. So there, the area outside of the middle oval and the little um, stamen place are all have all been wet and now I'm picking up the color and I'm just lining the outside edge. What this does, it concentrates the color right on the outside edge and that's what you want. You want all the color on the outside edge. And it doesn't matter so much if you go out, if you go over where you wet the paper before um, because this is just the outside and you just make sure that the color's moving, like there's no awkward lines or blooms. But yeah, anywhere there needs to be more color, just add it. Okay, now this looks, this looks okay. Now what you do is you can wipe off your brush a little and just get some cleaner water, maybe lightly pigmented water and just sort of start working your color in the words. Wanted to put a little more color there. But you just want to make sure that now your brush has less and less color on it so that you're working the color inwards into the middle. You can use a paper towel and because I'm using a water brush, dabbing it and then squeezing a little, it is rinsing out the color out of my brush. But if you're just using a normal brush, then just um, dip it and lightly wipe it on a paper towel. This might look like a mess right now, but uh, trust me, it'll, it'll work out. Okay. Sort of pull the color in as much as you can, and it doesn't matter if it's not completely smooth, because this is watercolor. And more importantly, this is a really, really easy look, you know, it's a really simple looking kids watercolor style sort of thing. It's not like it's ornate, uh, it's not like there's detailed petals or anything like that. You're just pulling the color in so that, and... For the middle, it's best to go a little over the oval than to not go enough. And I'll show you why later. Because we're going to be adding more colors to the middle. Now let this dry just a tiny bit. You can clean off your water brush or normal brush at this time. 
And now take a slightly darker color. Um, a brown or a darker red would work. Or really any color that you want. Um, in my in this case, I'm gonna use a darker reddish brown, sort of a, um, maybe a, I don't know, raw umber color almost. Not quite. Um, it's hard to describe. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm lining where that pencil mark for my inside oval was, and also right over the tip of the stamen. So as you can see, I'm actually letting the color sort of bleed into the normal petal. Um, this is because this is actually like the shadow. So you're just sort of moving the color around so that your flower's got a shadow in the very center. And you can pick up the excess color and blend it out by dabbing off your brush and then just sort of going around and picking up the extra color. Now I think the center needs just a tiny bit more definition, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. And again, just pick up the extra along the edge to make sure that you don't have any really clear lines about where this is. Okay, and I think that's good. You can sort of let it feather out a little because, uh, well, just sort of is as the shadows. Now, at this point, if like you, um, if you're using cardstock like me instead of good watercolor paper, your paper might be slightly warped, and that's okay because it does give the flower a more organic feel to have just some. You know, some uh, irregularities. And of course, since this is watercolors, the paint will be moving where the paper has natural valleys. Now, you want to let this dry a little bit because next we're adding green. So, it's really dry here um, right now. So, it actually is already dried. But if you're living in a little more humid climate you might want to wait a little bit and I'm just gonna use a a um, yellowish green for this first because I went a little bit too much inside I'm gonna liquidate and sort of blur out all the color inside then I'm gonna dab my paintbrush and just sort of clean up um, I just wanted to get rid of that purple as much as I could. And also, this does help sort of erase the pencil lines and uh, just, you know, make things a little bit lighter and hopefully it won't get covered up. Now, I am actually using a rather opaque um, green. It's just this watercolor set has more opacity than the more traditional translucent sets. So that's why you can see that the purple is actually getting covered up a little bit by the green, but if you're using a more translucent set, it doesn't matter so much, especially if you're using watercolor paper, because you can always pick up the color with the brush. Or if need be, you can actually always go back and add in color with a, a color pencil or you know something like that. Just add in a little opaque color. But I'm just working it till I like the color. I think the colors might be a little bit too... Let's see, I'm gonna add just a little bit more yellow to that because I love the warmth of the yellow and since the actual flower itself is in a cool purple, um, I'm gonna add some more yellow. And now this, I'm just gonna sort of brush over this so that it's not very clear. And then I'm going to add the center. Um, now my center is going to be yellow, maybe slightly brownish, but yellow. So that's typically what the well, what the flowers um, have in the center. But if you wanted to do brown or something, that's up to you. And as you can see, I'm just sort of feathering it out into the green area because I really didn't, I really don't want a more really really clear uh, ending because it just I don't know, I feel like the shadows, it just sort of looks better if it's blended in a little bit more. But that's all up to you.
Now, as you can see, as you can see, there's a little bit of area where I may have accidentally gone over this with my finger. Oopsie. So I'm just gonna sort of take my water brush and just reline the very edge where my finger sort of smudged it. And I'm just using my brush to pull the color along so that it's not that obvious. It's okay though if there's a little bit of irregularity because Technically speaking, you might actually have petals, or depending on what look you're trying to get. Um, I mean, I know the, um, I know I've seen flowers before where it's like literally just a smooth tube, but, so, well, most flowers are not, so. Clean your brush really well, and I'm just going to try to remove that color. And actually, I'm going to put the stem in. So let me... I just have a paper towel. I'm blotting off the water. And now I'm going to put the stem in. Um, as you might expect, stem the stem will be green. So... Let me get that. And I'm just going to decide where it go, will go. And I think I want it to go sort of like that. Because I think I want to use this on in the middle of a card. Now you can leave it like this, well maybe a little thicker, or you could actually have the stem sort of a little bit um bigger right where it meets the flower. And I like the little bigger look like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And of course make sure you know your flower's dry enough that it's not running into the paint of the uh stem. But I like that look, so that's what I'm going with. Now, if you wanted to try for shading at this point, you could. Um, well, first of all, you want to make sure the shape is good. In this case, I think I want just a little bit bigger. Yep, and uh, just a little bit bigger, so... I want to make it so that this flower is comparatively small. It's not like um not like a daisy where the daisy is huge but the stem is really small. I want it more green. Mostly because I'm thinking of you know this will be the center of a card or something. And so I want a little bit of a more more. Um obviously it's gonna get cropped eventually, so the bottom the very bottom of the stem is not that important. But anyway, as to the shading, what you do is, you can actually take a darker color and just run it along the darker part of the stem. In this case, right under the head of the flower. And then right, I'm going to make it so that the light's coming from the right. So I'm just going to... good and since this is all hand done it doesn't have to be perfect no one expects perfection when it's hand drawn and then you could take a lighter color and just sort of this is a more yellow green than the green I had as my base but as you can see it's just a little bit of shading very subtle um, you can make it more obvious if you feel like it but I think the subtle shading is good enough for me, and since I'm cropping at the bottom, I know the bottom looks just a little bit lumpier, but I'm cropping it out so it doesn't matter that much, like that, maybe. Now, at this point, you could add a leaf, um, but since I'm not sure how far I'm cropping and whatnot, I, I really don't want to add a leaf where, you know, maybe half the leaf will be gone by the time I cut it, so. But that's the finished flower. So this is the finished flower that we just did. Now compare it to this one that 
I showed at the beginning, which I think is the best one that I've done. Um, it's very similar. Obviously, this one just has a little bit more shading because I went with a lighter hand on the purple in the center. Um, but I really like how vibrant the yellow we just did was. I think the center, it really blended well with the green. Um, but again, this is a super simple flower that anyone can do. And I mean, honestly, if you don't even have watercolor paint, you can even use markers. You can just use a brush, um, you know, draw the markers on a piece of plastic or something, and then use water to use that as your watercolor palette. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, have fun making this watercolor flower.